it's Jenna, Cooper, and Marianne, and you're watching How to Do Stuff Good. On today's episode, things are going to get a little bit weird and a little bit wonderful. Let's take a look at the weird and wonderful stuff coming up today. I'll show you my super weird upside down garden. Worms and dirt that are so disgusting, you're going to want to eat them all. What the heck is happening here? Stay tuned to find out. It's just a normal chocolate chip cookie. With spiders on top. And I've got my grossest prank ever. That looks so Exciting. cool. Exciting. <laughs> is it just me or are you guys sensing a bit of grossness coming up today? Oh, yes! Yeah. Love the gross. Okay, guys, let's get this show on the road. And if you're into clean eating, you might want to look away now. Sahara's cooking up a storm in the kitchen. Let's check it out. I eat worms. There, I said it. Are you happy now? I think worms are delicious and weird and wonderful, and I think you're going to love them too. Let's get wormy. First things first, don't eat real worms. You will get sick. Please don't eat real worms. For this tasty slash gross hack, you'll need red jelly, gelatin, hot water, cream, reusable silicon straws, green food coloring, chocolate bickies, and clean hands. First step, you're gonna need to dissolve your red jelly into the hot water. Make sure you have an adult on standby. Now mix. Be really careful because the water is hot. Once your jelly is dissolved, add your gelatin. This will make it go from a jelly to more of a gummy type of texture. I love jelly, so this is gonna be great. Wait for it to cool down. Now that it's cool, add your cream and green food colouring. This is looking a bit pink for a worm, so just a bit of green. I'm going to add one drop at a time. Getting there, but not quite. That looks pretty wormy to me. We're going to tie our straws like this. Then we're going to place it into a narrow container. Like this. Then a second jug, so we don't make too much of a mess. Now we're going to pour our wormy mixture into the straws. This might go everywhere, but oh well. I'm trying to pour the liquid into the narrow container because the straws are going to suck it up anyway. Suck it up, straws. I did say it was going to get a bit messy. Pop this in the fridge for a few hours, then let's get started on the dirt. Chalky chalky pickies into a bag. Now, time to smash. Please don't smash your hands. We want this to have dirt consistency. Tasty, tasty dirt. This looks pretty dirty to me. Let's go see if the worms have worked. They're done. Now, grab one at a time. Warm it up. Grab it where there's no jelly. And squeeze. It's working. And there you have it. Your first jelly worm. That is pretty wormy to me. Say hello to my wormy friends. Two at a time. What can I say? I've done it. Put your dirt in a bowl and it's time to add the worms. You want to get some on top, some hidden. Just how you would normally find one making a little worm farm. This looks really realistic. Maybe a little bit too realistic. There's one thing left to do. It's time to eat some worms. A little slimy. A little crunchy. A little raspberry. You heard it here first. Worms are delicious. everyday house plants weird. You turn them upside down. Check out my flipped garden. For this eco hack, you're gonna need a big bottle, some fly mesh, some twine, a hole punch, and some plants and soil. I'm using a nasturtium. Let's get started. First, cut the bottom off your big bottle. I'm gonna need an adult to help with this. Thanks, adult. 
what's happened to this bottle is they've cut two straps at the end. This is where we're going to hang our plant from. We're going to put the fly mesh in the bottle. You need to put this in so the soil doesn't fall out. We're going to need to cut a hole in it so the plant can poke through. You want to make two diagonal cuts in the middle and a slit like this. Now we have this. Put this in the bottle and push it all the way down till it comes out the neck. We have a hole where the plant can come through. Now it's time to put the plant through the neck of the bottle. If we just shove it in there, it's going to fall apart and get really wrecked. So I've got a hack for you. You get the plant and you wrap it up in this piece of paper. Make sure you're using gloves when you're handling soil. Now carefully wrap your plant, making sure not to hurt any of the leaves. Okay, make sure you roll it super tight so it can fit through the neck of the bottle. Now, push it through. I know this is a bit fiddly, but just keep pushing it through. There we go. Gently pull it through. Yeah, just pull from the tip so you're not pulling the plant as much. Okay, there we go. Now for the last bit, you have to grab the roots and slowly pull the paper off the plant. Yep, uh, eh. almost there. Woohoo, we did it, finally. Put a little bit of soil in the bottom, just to make sure it's nice and snug in there. There we go. What we're gonna need to do is punch some holes in these straps. You can use tape, but I'm gonna put twine through my holes. Poke your twine through and just tie it up. That's how you're gonna hang it. There we go. Ooh, looks amazing. And a little bit more soil. There we go. Ah, are we good? We are good. And there you have it, a hanging upside down plant. Water them every day and you can watch them grow up. Or in this case, grow down. See ya. Here's something that's so bizarre. It's one for the how the heck does that even happen books. Take a look at this. It's a chain of tiny metal balls all linked up and all coiled in this jar. Nothing out of the ordinary, right? But check out what happens when I pull out the metal chain and drop it. How did it go so high? The chain seemed to totally ignore gravity and climb straight out of the jug. So what in the name of science is happening here? Well, scientists don't exactly know. They agree it's most likely to do with how stiff the links are and how they're coiled on top of each other. When the chain is dropped from the jug, the remaining chain links lift at the front, which creates a force down at the other end, which in turn creates an upwards force, and so on. Then the magic happens. The person who discovered this is called Steve Mould, so this is known as the Mould Effect. Give it a go. And you could even show your friends this and start a chain reaction. Well, I've got a really long tongue. I can fit my whole fist into my mouth. Does that count? I'm double jointed in my thumb and people get pretty grossed out when I do things like this. They just pop out. I find that so strange. <laughs> but hey, being weird and different, that's the best. We're all about weird and wonderful today, but I don't think anybody's going to be ready to see how gross my prank is. If you've got a weak stomach, look away, because I'm making this. For this hack, you'll need bananas, flour, honey, PVA glue, and a dropper like this. First step is grab your banana and you're gonna mash it up until it's a paste. So the banana is gonna be the paste of our pus. Add a little bit of flour and a little bit of honey until it's a really gloopy paste. This would probably taste nice if it wasn't looking so disgusting. That looks gross. Perfect. 
Next, grab your PVA glue and paint a patch wherever you want your boil to be. I'm gonna do it right here on my forearm until it looks like this. Now, fill up your dropper with the banana pussy mix. Oh, it's looking so gross and disgusting. Squeeze in your pus paste. Uh. That looks disgusting. Now, prepare to dazzle slash disgust your besties with a pus-filled explosion. Let's go. Hey fam, does this look normal? Ew! Can someone pop it for me? Ew, no, no, ew! Gosh. Never mind, I'll just pop it myself. No. Ew. Oh, gosh. Well, I'd call that prank a wonderful success. Okay, no. So you've heard of a terrarium, little tiny jars full of tiny plants, all very cute. But what about a freaky, spooky terrarium? Nothing cute about that. For this creepy craft, you'll need a large jar, a small string of fairy lights, some cellophane, twigs, black cardboard cut into a circle, creepy crawlies, dried moss, and a low temperature glue gun. Plus an adult to help you with this thing. First step, grab the lid of your jar and the cardboard and stick it in. Next, grab your cellophane and wrap your fairy lights in it. Just fold that over and put a nice little piece of glue and stick it. Basically, you just want to create like a little envelope. Next, just stick your fairy lights on the inside of your lid. Now add your sticks and glue them onto the side of the battery pack. As you can see, I've painted these black. Now let's add our creepy crawlies. It doesn't really matter if you get all the gluey kind of stringy feeling all around it because it kind of makes it look like spider webs. Just so maybe glue the spider to the tree. Get our other spider. Put our bat up here. Now we're gonna add our moss to all the parts that you don't want to be seen. And I've added a bit of black paint on the top so it gives it that kind of eerie feeling of it. When you're done with your design, turn the lights on, then carefully put the jar over. Oh yeah, that looks really cool. And disturbing at the same time. Well, there you go. Spooky terrarium to give your bedroom a creepy vibe. The weirdest thing I've ever eaten would be snails, which I had at a French restaurant for my birthday, and they were actually surprisingly good. Probably this thing that my mum makes that's called grandma snot. Probably something my sister cooks. <laughs> it tastes horrible, according to me, but my mum loves it for some reason. <laughs> it was squid ramen, and it was, like, black because of the ink. Yeah, it was pretty, like, I don't know, intense and weird. <laughs> This is a container. Watch me flip it. For this experiment, all you need is a curved glass with water and a picture of a pig. Well, it doesn't have to be a pig. I just love them. So now the pig is facing this way. And now... Did we do it? Did we flip the pig? We flipped the pig! We flipped the pig! The pig is flipped. But why? I'm so glad you asked. The pig flipping, or whatever you want to flip, all happens because of something called refraction. <clears throat> um, other way, please? <sighs> Better. Refraction is the bending of light. Anytime light travels through one surface to another, it bends. So the light bends when it enters the water, and then bends again when it leaves the water. Check it out with these arrows. Now it's pointing this way, but now, it's pointing that way. This way, that way. This way, that way. This piggy went to market, and this piggy took an alternative route. 
Which way am I going? This way or this way? I'm not sure anymore. Refraction. It's weird and it's science, so I flip and love it. Should I get that back? What's weird and wonderful about choc chip cookies? Not much. So, how do you take them to the next level? Just add spiders. <laughs> For this cook, you're gonna need butter, sugar, brown sugar, an egg, vanilla extract, self-raising flour, choc chips, and clean hands. Pop in your butter and your sugar, and use a mixer to cream them. Add your brown sugar and just keep mixing. You know it's done when it's a nice pale shade of yellow. Add the egg and the vanilla and keep beating. Next step, add the self-raising flour and the choc chips. Wooden spoon to combine it all. All right, let's get stuck in. My dough's looking perfect. Now it's time to put on the tray. Put in to balls like that size and then put it on it and then just squash it with a spoon or with your fingers. So about that size. Okay, now they're ready. We can pop them in the oven for about eight minutes, but we don't want to fully cook them. This is where it's about to get tricky. After the eight minutes, place a few choc chips on top, but careful, they're hot. And make sure you point them face down. It's gonna be very helpful later. These choc chips, they're gonna be our spiders. Now that that's done, back in the oven for two minutes. Thanks, adult. Now they're fully cooked, we can make the spider patterns with just a toothpick. Here we go. It's basically painting with chocolate. Why am I putting spiders on a cookie? It's a weird and wonderful episode. Why not? Bingo, bango, they're done. Slightly scary chocolate chip cookies to the den. See ya. Let's go, We're hungry. My new creation coming in hot. Ooh, oh, so hot. <laughs> oh, plus, surprise. Whoa, we got worms. I'm legit so excited to eat spiders, worms, and <laughs> Let's dig in. Okay. Mmm. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Those were so good. I thought it was going to be bad because it looks disgusting. But they were really good. And the dirt was great as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The cookies, they were super crunchy. Good job. All right. Hope you got your weird and wonderful fix today. We'll see you next time. Bye! See ya! For more information on how to do stuff good, search up ABC Me.